Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on YouTube. Alright, today we are returning to a favorite of this channel, although we've only just kind of started this, and that is memes, right? Memes are all the rage on the internet, they're hilarious, and it's great when you can get those that also apply to history. There's a lot of, you know, kind of funny ones that, uh, especially if you, if you kind of know history, um, it makes them even funnier, obviously. And I know there's kind of inside joke mentality of it, but sometimes I've looked at memes where it's like, I look at them and I don't, I may not get the joke, even like, like, like history memes, and I'm like, I should go learn more about that. So maybe that can be useful to you if you uh, see any here that maybe you don't know about. All right, so basically what I do here is on Discord, I uh, have a channel for, for memes, and if you would like to join our Discord, there'll be a link down below that you can do that and send some. There are rules for the memes, what kind of, stu what kind of stuff is uh, appropriate for what, what would go on my channel. But um, what I do is have the mods pull out memes, and then they send them to me, and I haven't looked at them, and we just kind of get them shown to me, and I react to them. Um, I guess maybe explain some of the stories behind them, but had a good time with the first uh, video that I did of this, and this is part two, so if you hadn't seen the part one kind of reaction to memes, then um, for sure you check that out. So anyways, all right, if you've ever wanted to see a history teacher react to history memes, you got it right here. All right, so I haven't seen these. I'm going to put them up here, so we'll go through them together. Hopefully we get some funny ones. Let's see what we got here. All right, what do we got here? Okay, so we got Jeff Bezos is the richest man in history. <laughs> Musa, uh, the first of Mali. I'm sorry, is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? This is great. Um, so Mansa Musa was a Malian king who is said to be the richest man in world history. Um, that, uh, uh, and this would have been during like the Middle Ages um, in Mali. And specifically had gotten his wealth from basically dominating much of the global gold trade much of what uh, in the middle ages gold was coming out of west africa and he had controlled that and there was a great story just to add to it that he basically blew up the economies of places he went so he was a devout muslim and he famously performed the hajj which is the religious sort of pilgrimage that all muslims are expected to make to to the holy land so he needed to go across all of africa and he was so rich, it said, and he he brought so much money with him and this giant entourage that wherever he went, him and his whole group just put in so much money, spent so much money in the towns that it created like hyperinflation in these places and uh, made uh, um, economies like unstable. So, yeah, he's considered often to be the richest man in history. And uh, yeah, but we got, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, is this some sort of peasant joke? I'm too rich to understand. <laughs> that sounds about right. All right, good way to, good way to start off. All right, what do we got here? We got some Columbus. He says, that's a nice nation you got there. Be a shame if someone discovered it. <laughs> Jeez, not to downplay mass genocide, but yeah, I guess that's kind of the, kind of the joke there is, you know, discovering it actually meant conquering it and sometimes obliterating it when you talk about the age of exploration here so this is this is a uh, christopher columbus so famous uh painting for him it shows you know in the north there though it's it's north america he never went to uh really north america he's was mostly in the caribbean there and on the mainland america but nevertheless yeah that's good he d discovered you don't want to be discovered right by these explorers all right what we got next Girls when getting rejected by art schools. She's crying. Boys getting rejected by art schools. Oh, it's Hitler. So yeah, so Hitler's story was, famous story was, um, he was an aspiring artist and he uh, uh, was in Vienna, Austria. Um, kind of a loner at that time. He was, his parents had died, you know, and he was, uh, um, uh, uh, well, I don't know if he's late teens, early 20s or whatever at that time. But was trying to go to a pretty, from what I understand, prestigious art school in Vienna. And he was rejected. And with that, he was kind of lost because that was kind of his skill set. And he actually spent a lot of time, he spent months or maybe even years, trying to just sell artwork on the streets and in bars and stuff in Vienna. Um, and then it was the famous thing was was that people say is, you know, that like maybe motivated him or something. But nevertheless, not being able to be a full-time artist is what also 
semi pushed him into joining the military because uh, when World War One broke out, he didn't have a lot of options, and then goes into the military, fights in the war, and the famous thing, of course, is that uh, he came out of the war a very different person than he went into the war. So, all right, we got next. When you're a teacher in 1950 and see a student picking up the pen with l- with left hand, hi kid, do you like violence? Yeah, there's that old like superstitious thing that or whatever that like it was bad to be left-handed, which would be hard because I'm actually left-handed. Um, and yeah, like you 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 pick it up and I, I don't know if that ever happened though in older times like smack their left hand with the rulers like no you're gonna pick it up with your right hand. Then we got Eminem here with his. Hey kid, you like violence? That's the, uh, forget which song that's from of his, but yeah. All right. Dude's crying. Learning history in school, learning history from memes. He's just sad and that guy's happy. Now, you actually learning history from memes? You could. You got to be careful, too, because are you really going to take credible source from memes, especially if you don't know the topic already? Be careful there, kids, but hey, if it's factual... And gets people liking it, then then I'm down with it. Meme, meme away. All right, what do we got here? This says, when I hear... It's loaded. Okay, when I hear the phrase, men don't start drama. Men don't start drama. Oh, it's world history. World history is nothing but dramatic men, right? <laughs> Good call. Good call. Because it's, it's supposed to be like a, a, a thing on... Like, women start drama, stuff like that. Yeah, read a history book. I don't know if that's the case. All right, what do we got? Germany after World War I fails. It's rewind time. So we got Will Smith. I don't know the rewind time. Is that a meme? But nevertheless, the whole Germany after World War I. So it's like Germany gets devastated by World War I. Treaty of Versailles limits and destroys their economy and and limits their military, things like that. And then they're like, we're going to go back to it, right? Um Back to militarization and stuff like that, even though it was against the treaty, right? So, all right, rewind time. Excellent. All right, next, what do we got? What women, th- what men think women want, what women actually want. Rasputin. Okay, so <laughs> what women think women want. That's the dude from uh, the, what's that, sh- uh, the, the Stranger Things, right? So it's just like attractive, good shape guy, and what, actually, what women actually want. Rasputin. So Rasputin down there was the self-proclaimed holy man of Russia at the turn of the 20th century that, of course, was very well infiltrated into the family of uh, the Romanov family, Tsar Nicholas and his wife. And part of his big story was that he had a way with women, that he captivated women and always had women around him. He was part of a a pretty much like a a semi, I forget that, that the kind of religious group he was with, some off offshoot of orthodox christian or something that that was involved in um all kinds of promiscuous behavior and stuff like that but it was said that he had like a captivating effect on women um and some of you might be like what no like how could you do that but dude i guess was a at a way with words and he was yeah just like he could entrench them that would entrench them that's what was said about rasputin but yeah you look at him you're like Ugh. i tell that story in class sometimes i'm like all right ladies so this guy had a captivating hold on women and usually other girls are like what oh but yeah that's the story for rasputin there all right what else we got okay when you just got a new country and you leave your kids alone with it for a couple centuries and they've already broke it <laughs> so you got washington he's like hey i set up your country i set up this country everything should be good right all right i'm leaving and then, oh my gosh, then we got wars, civil wars, and all the other stuff going on. Sorry, sorry, George. Sorry, George. <laughs> all right, here we go. How we got? All right, how your grandparents describe what their daily trip to school is like. <laughs> you got these, like, Viking dudes that have to, like, battle their way, right? It's like, I had to walk in snow, you know, to school and, and all that stuff. So maybe that was how it was like for, for, for like, old Vikings and stuff. That's good. All right, Boomer. What do we got next? Martin Luther, maybe we should do good because we love God, not out of fear of hell. 16th century Catholics. Are you delusional? Do you suffer from a mental illness? The whole big thing there, Martin Luther, was the uh, start of the Protestant Reformation. And, 
you know, he was saying that good works don't don't get you into heaven and stuff like that. But um, but the the, the and, and try to teach this idea of more of a, a like a loving God than what he thought that the, the Catholic the uh, Catholic Church had portrayed God to be, which is hey, you do this because you look at God's wrath, right, rather than God's love, which was Mar- what Martin Luther and a lot of the Protestants, some of them, um, were were trying to do there. So are you delusional? Got some Doctor Phil there, nice. All right, all right. Let's keep it rolling. Okay, what do we got? Western people explaining why it would be better if we all went back to the 90s. People from ex-Yugoslavia. <laughs> Is that, uh, what's her name? Zendaya? Is that her? Who's in the, the star, uh, or uh, uh, Spider-Man? Um, what was that? Yeah, the new, newer Spider-Mans. Yeah, so Yugoslavia has an interesting history because it was created pretty much after um, World War One, And then... Has all kinds of independence issues um, because it is a diverse region and had warfare all back in the 90s. There's some nasty stuff going in there um, and with Bosnia and Serbia and, and, and those regions. So, yeah. Um, some people say in history, the good old days of history. It's probably not always the good old days for everybody around the world if you pick any time period. Great. All right, what do we got? History memes. Every time a foreign power tried to invade Russia during the winter. Nice. We got that ice dude from Game of Thrones who they come out and they're like zombies out of the ice. Yeah, pretty much, right? You you don't usually don't do well when you invade Russia. Um, ask Napoleon, ask Hitler, right? It's like you go in there and it seems people always underestimate the Russian winter. Uh, the fa- you know, famous ones being with, with uh, especially Napoleon and Hitler, who I think people, they underestimate it big time. It's like, hey, we got winter in Germany. We got winter in France. It snows and stuff like that. But no, you haven't met the bitter, bitter winter that can come from Russia. And of course, Russians being very used to that can fight in that. Oftentimes what happens too is it seems that they'll fight these fight these wars or invade Russia and they, they win pretty well. And then you get the reinforcements, right, that, that eventually come to Russia after they've been invaded. And oftentimes those reinforcements come from uh, east by the Ural Mountains or, shoot, even Siberia or something like that. Some of those people that are really, really have been grown and, and, and uh, grown up in, in the cold, some of the coldest places on Earth. And when those people... They join, you know, the Russian enf- uh, uh, enforcements. Um, winter's no issue for them at all. So that's great. That's good. All right, what do we got here? How does the British Museum have so many incredible artifacts compared to other museums? The secret ingredient is crime. <laughs> I guess the big thing is the British, you know, the age of imperialism for, for Britain in the uh, 16, 17, 1800s and into the 1900s. Um, uh, also brought in a lot of archaeological interest, right? So they would go to these places, and depending on who you are, you'd be like, oh, they're preserving history, they're getting artifacts and all this stuff. But what a lot of people would be saying is, no, they're basically grave robbers. They're stealing from the, 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 the local areas here, right? So, And you could fill up museums with mummies and artifacts and all that stuff. So, yeah, it makes sense. Depends on which side of the coin you're on there. Are they helping preserve the history, or are they just exploiting it? So... Okay. All right, what do we got here? We got some Dave Chappelle. All right, it's loading here, but you can see it. Okay, when you can't see the enemy in the jungle, so you just move the jungle. Modern problems require modern solutions. This would be this would probably be in reference to like the Vietnam War and using things like Agent Orange and um, napalm and those things that that like burn, um, basically like our jellified gasoline, and you just burn through the jungles and war it's like you can't go on foot because there's traps and there's hiding places and stuff like that so when you see one of these wars that a foreign nation like the united states has to go into 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 a jungle it would it's so hard for them to fight because of the terrain that they would just you know what let's just obliterate it and you could see that starting in places like in world war ii with uh the the war in the pacific and the americans would go in and use flamethrowers and try to clear out jungled areas and stuff like that because they were so afraid of traps and hiding spots and stuff like that so all right dave all right let's move on all right west germany and east germany (laughs) this kind of makes sense so this would be like from the 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 partition of, of of germany after world war ii where west germany becomes very westernized culturally right because you had the americans the british and the and the french 
that were helping the, the 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 rebuilding of Germany into a more Western style state. And then you got the militarized East German side, um, influenced by the Soviet Union. They wouldn't have been dancing to the Western discotheques, would they? <laughs> but yeah, it kind of makes sense of the cultural differences that happened between Germany there. All right, the Western kind of way. Good. All right. What do we got here? Okay, beginning of World War Two. Adolf Hitler. How do I play? He has annexed Austria. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. How do I play? Okay. Adolf Hitler has annexed Austria. Adolf Hitler has invaded Poland. Adolf Hitler invaded Denmark. Invaded Norway. Invaded Belgium. Has invaded France. Don't worry, guys. I figured it out. Okay. Yeah, he, he learned on his own because he was invading everybody. That's what Hitler was doing, right? He's going in like all these different directions. Starting east with places like Austria, his homeland, and Czechoslovakia, then into Poland. Didn't have to go further east than Poland because of the treaty that was made with um, Stalin and the Soviet Union. Then it go north, right? Denmark, Norway, yep, and then went west to Belgium, France. All right, end of World War II. Adolf Hitler, don't worry, guys. I have a plan. Adolf Hitler has left the game. <laughs> probably referring to the um, his ending his life there at the end when the war was basically over and the Soviet Union had uh, enclosed him in. So now it's pretty good. I, I like sometimes the, the history memes and now they add it to like video games. I find those funny as a, as a gamer myself. Awesome. That was pretty good. I like that. All right. All right, I got DeVito. What's he saying? Confederate troops see someone approaching on horseback in the night. So anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> Wait, is this some kind of knock on the Confederate troops that anytime they saw someone on horseback at night, they just started shooting? I don't know. Is there a deeper story there that I don't know about? Nevertheless, it's Danny DeVito with pistols. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, what else we got? All right. Okay, we got some Disney, some Despicable Me stuff going, right? So we got wait until Britain fights in Europe. Attack Canada. Get defeated by Canadian militia. Get defeated by Canadian militia. Teach your children that you won the war. Okay, I'm trying to absorb this. Wait until Britain fights in Europe. Attack Canada, or like telling Canada to attack. Get defeated by Canadian militia. Get defeated by Canadian militia. He's looking at it away, and then he's looking at it. Teach your children that you won the war. I don't know, is this a jab at Americans? How Americans would get laid into these wars after all everything's been softened up and then America will claim victory for the war? Is that what's going on here? Am I missing one? But anyway, good stuff. All right. Ooh, we got chess. Something with the Mongols here. You guys know I love learning about the Mongols. Is this two? Nobody. The Mongols. <laughs> it's like if the Mongols played chess, they would do nothing but knights because they were... Um, their 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 uh, best best technique was on horseback. They were like the best horse riders in the world, and we're basically one with them. That's great. Okay, does this does this go along with it? Oh no. Okay, this is another one. Okay, but that was good though with the Mongols. All right, what do we got here? When you go to war with Russia, just tons of just like foot soldiers. Is that what they're saying? Well, our other armies have these diversified different. Uh, uh, yeah, diversification of like 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 different types of um, soldiers and stuff. Because Russia's always had large armies, but it's just like yeah, they're like pawns, and they would just get thrown. You know, if you're you're depending on what wars you're talking about, if you're talking about like the Soviet Union just throwing people by the millions into that. So good stuff there. We got some chess references. Nice people play chess anymore. I still love playing chess. All right, what do we got here? We got the Norwegian army when they see a penguin in Edinburgh Zoo. You'll be a uh, honorable regiment sergeant major. Shoot, someone explain this one to me. Penguins, there's no penguins up there. <laughs> okay, yeah, someone explain this one to me. Another Game of Thrones. I mean, I know Game of Thrones, but when he's going through telling them what they're all be, you'll be a re uh, honorable. Re uh, why in the Edinburgh Zoo? So we're in Scotland. Explain that one to me. Hey, I'm here too to learn from these memes. Someone explain that story. Put it in the comments. Put it in Discord. All right. Norway during World War II. We declare ourselves new Germany. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do that like Scandinavia did in World War I, which is the nation's um, 
uh, basically declaring neutrality. But the Germans wanted so much control of the coast of the North Atlantic that that's why they went into Denmark, into Norway, so they could basically control that. They don't care what you think. Neutrality is not a, a word they're going to care about, right? <laughs> All right, let's do a few more. All right, Norway, we are finally free from centuries of Danish control. Sweden, it's free real estate. <laughs> yeah, so the Swedish kingdom um, was enormous, you know. Uh, uh, Catherine the Great and uh, um, Peter put a lot of uh, pressure on, on Sweden there. But yeah, Sweden dominated uh, so much of, of kind of northern Europe there for, for quite a while until they were kind of taken down a bit by some of the Russian um, invasions, stuff like that, as the Russians were looking to get more access to warm water ports. But it's free real estate. Do you guys even know the show? Tim and Eric Awesome Show, if that's the one from, from that. But I, I love that show. That was a great show, like my college days. All right, what do we got? Vikings in Norwegian history books. Vikings in English history books, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, if you're on the other side, then the Vikings look like the the end of times, the apocalypse. But <laughs> yeah, but for the English, because um, yeah, Viking and Viking related peoples were always uh, sailing over to the English Isles and all kinds of kind or causing all kinds of havoc. All right, what we got here? All right, so Norwegians. What do we got? Stop sinking. We got Norwegians, uh, yeah, Norway. Uh, please stop sinking our ships. We are neutral in this war. <laughs> the Germans, are like, nah, nah. I don't think I will. Back to the the neutrality thing. Great. Norway, Germans. Oh no! It's got Bambi here. Sleeping. Dang. Have you ever seen Norway? You're seeing the Norwegians um, portrayed that way. It's great. Dude, we're getting all kinds of Norway. Oh, it's probably... Okay, so this is from my Norwegian mod, Aragorn. Okay, let's see. Norway in the Middle Ages. Y'all yeah, buff. Norway in the rest of history. Okay. Norway now. <laughs> Money and oil. Is this, is this how you Norwegians think of yourself, too? <laughs> You do that one thing and your friends make fun of you for the next 74 years. Kiesling, a traitor who collaborates with an enemy force occupying their country. <laughs> You're getting more Norwegian time than we've ever had, right? Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Languaged families. Okay, Indo-European, Germanic, Northern Germanic, Southern Scandinavian. Always, and they're all... So if you look at some of those, there's there's uh, uh, with these these like um, Northern Germanic languages, Scandinavian, etc. They have a lot of root connections there. But I always like the Spider-Man memes where they're like pointing at something. One of my favorite ones was like the Constantinople and Istanbul, and they're both pointing at each other. Good stuff. All right, we'll give you one more Norwegian one here. Okay, ha hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just a just change it a bit so it doesn't look the same. Because <laughs> they all got the same flags. <laughs> Iceland, Faroe Islands. English, Wales, yeah, Denmark, Sweden, Finland. <laughs> They're all copying each other's homework. I like that. That's a good one. That was a good one to do there. All right, let's do a couple more. Okay, we got in, night, er, in 1898, Nikola Tesla once tricked an entire crowd into believing they could control a toy boat by shouting commands. He had in fact invented radio control and was piloting the boat himself. Illusion 100 from Skyrim. That's great because they didn't understand what radio control would be, which would be totally crazy to think about if you had never seen anything like that. Like, what's controlling that? And a little, uh, little boat. That's cool. That's cool. I've never heard of that. Tesla, you trickster. OMG, desert foxes are so cute. So you got the desert fox. Yeah, um, uh, World War II fighting it uh, down in North Africa. Oh, he's not cute. But those foxes sure are. The Civil War. The War of Rebellion. So there we got the North. The War of Northern Aggression. Oh, it's taking a stab at the South there. Jeez. 
But yeah, North, well, they call the War of Northern Aggression. Sometimes in the South, in, in the history of the American Civil War, they'll call it that, right? Um, to to try to portray the North as hey, they were an invading force, which is which is true. We're an invading invading force. All right, what we got here? The Jewish scientists that fled the Nazis. Nazi scientists working for NASA after the war. Yeah, so a lot of them got in trouble, but uh, from the some of those um, Germans that were working in the uh, uh, these scientists during the Nazi era. But yeah, Jewish scientists that fled the Nazis. Yeah, so you know it was famous when during the Nuremberg Law years and just the the years of some of the um, uh, prejudice and oppression of the of the Jews in uh, the 1930s. Germany that a lot of them had left and their them and their families had left people like like Albert Einstein for example and yeah the famous thing was that a lot of those German scientists end up working um, kind of for the government or American government when they come over there and kind of using it against them I guess there so okay we're gonna do these last two right here for today all right to show the power of flex tape I saw Germany in half <laughs> the partition of Germany I don't know what this meme is in reference to though who is this guy the powerful is he like a is he like a like a um, like a TV salesman? <laughs> but yeah, you get that. Plus, uh, West Berlin they show in there. So interesting. After World War II, so the um, Germany was going to be split up um, in its rebuilding process. What they weren't going to do, like in World War One, was defeat Germany and then basically just kind of leave Germany alone. But no, they're going to like physically oversee. And one of the interesting things that happens in Berlin was, although it was in the uh, the Soviet sector of Germany, they divided up the city itself that no one nation could control the capital of Germany. All right, let's do one more. What we got? Teddy Roosevelt's assassin hearing him give a speech right after shooting him. Okay. <laughs> It's like, what? So there's this famous story of Teddy Roosevelt about this assassination attempt. He got shot. And he, he got shot. And he I think he was on the way to this, this speech he gave. And the famous thing was that Teddy Roosevelt gave this speech basically after having been shot. And... He's kind of seen as such a tough dude for that that you know he served, didn't didn't even go to the I guess the hospital or something right away. He went right to do his speech, and then gave it. And this assassin um, looks like for him is just like giving this look like, gosh, hey, I tried to assassinate you, but instead he gives his uh, he gives his speech. All right, anyways, you guys. All right, we'll go ahead and call it here for today's meme video. Check out part one um, of me showing you guys memes, and if you like that. Um, love to have you around as a subscriber. If you have not yet, I'll do more of these videos. They seem to be pretty popular. People like barely seeing a history teacher look at the history memes. They've been kind of fun here. So checking this out. So, um, I look forward to doing that. So definitely, uh, sub and enable notifications so you can come hang out with us at live streams. And, uh, I do live premieres for most all of my videos as well. And yeah, thanks again for doing that. Um, some other things, if you would like to be part of our Discord server, we have a good 5,000 or so members, go down below and there'll be a link to go join that um, down below. Right, right down below. And you'll be able to um, do that as well. Thanks to everyone that's been supporting the channel, whether it's just from watching or um, liking, telling your friends. Um, those of you who have been uh, voting um, in the Patreon polls, thank you for that. Thank you for that. And if you'd like to join our Patreon, they start at uh, $1 a month and get you access to polls. And it's just a way to support the channel. So thanks again, you guys, for supporting History Education and supporting my channel. And we'll uh, see you guys very soon. All right, with that, bye.